Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Earthbound. Last time, we trudged through Dusty Dunes Desert in order to circumvent the biggest traffic jam of all time. This episode, well, uh, I'm not. It, things aren't looking good. Ness and Jeff are unconscious. Now that raises some red flags because at the end of last episode, Ness was still among the living. Well, on my way back to the the cottage place to save, Ness died. Yeah, so Paula is just barely holding on to life. She has a sunstroke. I have one thousand dollars, but if I don't get back to Foresight and a hospital quickly, I will get a game over. So I wanna I wanna hoof it as fast as I can with my little ghosty friends floating behind me. And I want to reach, I want to reach Foreside. I am done with Dusty Dunes Desert. I need out. Now, that present um, is something that I didn't talk about last time because I forgot of its, its existence. So, that's good. And now I have all the presents of Dusty Dune, Dune Desert. Um, I also got another thing wrong last time. We got PSI Shield. We got a new level of it. Paula in assist, we got this level, and I mistakenly said that it was PSI Shield Epsilon. One of you in the comments corrected me, saying, pal, that's clearly the symbol for Sigma. I was like, you know what, you're right, that is Sigma. In fact, I don't think Epsilon is even a, a move, a type, um, in this game, so I have no idea where my head was, it looks like an E, and to be fair, I was under heavy fire last episode, so I couldn't really focus on anything for too long. Though I need to focus on things now, because if I don't, I can mess things up, and I'd have to look in post to see what I messed up. Um, this, this area of the game is a part where it is kind of hard to know what you're supposed to do, but if you do know, then it's extremely easy to do so, and luckily I do, so it is, and I am good. <laughs> Let, let's move on. I want to do a little short cutty cut here. I have 70 HP left with Paula, but uh, I just need to go to the hospital, and inconveniently, there's Hitman. Uh, inconveniently, the hospital is located at the northernmost part of, ta of town, so if we take a left at the next intersection, right here, and take a right up ahead, and turn around and go the other way, Paula's GPS will lead her to the hospital. And I got that $1,000, and that will come in handy, because I can pay $150 for each of the doctor's fees and bring Ness and, pa and Jeff back to life. Uh, and they're back in the pink, which... <laughs> that Yes, that is an expression, but it's also true, because I have the pink thing going on. Uh, Ness, use healing on Paula. Nice. In just a couple of seconds, everyone is looking fine. And now we can explore Foresight, the fourth town of the game. Uh, we passed an area that I would like to start out um, just a bit ago. Up here, if we had taken a left at this intersection, we would have seen the cafe. And I want to go in there because cafe, uh, cafes have like the best gossip in the world. I was in the middle of a caffeine buzz, and I had to get to the bathroom fast. When I got there, I accidentally knocked on the wall instead of the restroom door. The next thing I knew, someone asked, who is it? And it really surprised me. Maybe I just imagined it. Huh, foreshadowing. Now, I should note that in the Japanese version of the game, this is not a cafe, it is a bar. Which makes sense. That it would be a bar. I was surprised you- I'm surprised you talked to an ordinary guy like me. I have no information or items to help you out. Don't you think it's natural for a guy like me to be here? I enjoy the atmosphere here. By the way, let me quiz you. There are five apples. If you eat one, how many are left? Five minus one is four, so four's left. Ah, it's not funny? Okay, here's another one. Master Pokey's made Electra is made to order. Oh, puns aren't funny either. Actually, they are. That got you a couple of man points, though not enough to get your man card back. You're still a sad individual. I used to be Monotoli's employer. Then I realized his schemes made my company go bankrupt. My house and land were taken away. Now I'm homeless. 
Monotoli didn't used to be so powerful. I want to find out his secret, so I'm spending my time here, watching to see if he ever drops in. Kids shouldn't be drinking espresso. You shouldn't be hanging around here. What? Mr. Monotoli's here. You got that wrong, kid. What? Does Mr. Geldegard Monotoli come here often? Hello? Time to get up. It could never happen. Well, actually, that's not true. I think he just talked himself in circles and maybe blew my mind. Okay. <laughs> Wait, can I change the song? Seems like it's just for decoration. Okay. Bye! <laughs> so that was that was interesting. It, it certainly points us in the right direction. There's a guy named Montoli, and apparently he's a business owner that's a little bit corrupt, so we'll, we'll probably be dealing with him sometime, or later. I've heard some bad rumors about Mr. Montoli. I heard he made a deal with a pure evil entity in exchange for power. You know, stuff like that. Huh, so, definitely not good things we're hearing about Mr. Monotoli. Speaking of the Topella Theater, it actually never came up, there's a new singer called Venus. She's better than the Runway 5. I'm totally bonkers about her. Oh, so the Runway 5 are here. What happened to those guys digging for buried gold? I gave them a sandwich. If they found the gold, it could be worth- it would be worth a huge amount of money. They'd be able to pay off a million dollar debt very easily. If I were them, I'd go to Japan and live it up. <laughs> that, that's actually kind of funny. Like, wouldn't you go to, like, Vegas or something? Not Japan? Where- Oh, that's- actually, that's really funny, because gambling is strictly prohibited in Japan. So, it's like the opposite of where you'd want to go to <laughs> blow all your cash. In the old days, Mr. Monotoli was just a regular, unattractive real estate agent. Now he has the power to control the police force. I don't think the city of Foresight is any better than before. So, Monotoli is... bad. That's what I got out of it. Now, if you remember, last episode we encountered a sign in the desert that says... Uh, it's something along the lines of, If you want this reward that everyone will sing about in the old tales, you must find the lens, and go to the building bakery in Foreside, and go to the top and talk to Mr. T. That, that, pretty much what I got out of it, and it seems like that rings true, because we found the contact lenses, and we found Mr. T. I was thinking, there's a tight wad born every minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe if I use the contact lens. What? You came to deliver my grandma's memento? The contact lens? Thank you. Thank you so much! It's our family tradition to keep things forever. Okay, I'll give you something as a reward. Here are my socks that I use for only I use only for special occasions. I've worn these socks for just five years. There are no holes, and they've only been worn once since the last washing. They stink a little, but they're still good. Hey, don't refuse me here. I'm being generous. Ness got the pair of dirty socks. Please take good care of my socks. <laughs> Sniff. Such such a sad moment. And all he has to say are, uh, all he has to talk about are tight wads. We got his socks, which he's has a very strong attachment to, which is creepy. Who are you? Bread in this town has a very plain, nondescript flavor to it. To tell you the truth, I'm the owner of this bakery. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> Bye. Just by talking to people, you can kind of get an indication of where we're supposed to go and the order that we're supposed to do things. However. Earthbound, I think I've talked about this before, how it's non-linear, non-linearly linear. Like, if you know what to do, it's an extremely lin linear game, and there is only one right path. However, if you don't know what to do, you're going to be talking to everyone, and you're never going to figure out that path. Or, you are going to figure it out, but it's going to be pretty hard to do so. And our path will take us to the Topella Theater, which I'm pretty sure I walked right past. I think it's down here. I always get lost around this town. Yep, it's right there. I saw the letters. Okay, so let's go to the Topella Theater, because that seems interesting. Topella Theater, the home of brilliance. I just gave it that name. Please have your tickets ready. Oh, I don't have a ticket. Okay, ticket. Yes, I'll take, I'll take the ticket, yo. Uh, 
good s <laughs> pair of dirty socks use. A pair of dirty socks can't be used here. Man, that would have been awesome if I could just like throw the socks in his face and then run by as he's unconscious on the floor. Uh, show. Oh, I actually haven't read the thing on this. A pair of dirty socks. When used during battle, the enemy gets so nause nauseous, nauseous, nauseous from the right ripe order that they ripe odor that they cannot fight. Gone after one use. And apparently it has a side effect of making Pal stutter. Use the ticket. Thanks a lot. Please hurry. The show will be starting at any moment. Okay. Uh, before I go into those double doors, I want to go off the beaten path and go to, into the single door because it will bring us to the theater owner. So, uh, wait, what, what voice should I do for her? Um, yeah, this this will work. So you're a Runway 5 fan, huh? What? Excuse me. No, no. This band owes me a, a million bucks. If they break their contract, they'll be in deep doo-doo with the police. The police would probably say, Hey, you guys, or something like that. Unless you're able to pay a million dollars on their behalf, you'd have to find buried gold, or you'd never be able to pay such a huge sum of money. I don't know why all my laughs turn evil, but maybe that's because anyone who laughs in dialogue laughs for the <laughs> they laugh for the wrong reasons. And I I'm taking a stand against wrongful laughing. Do any of these guys have something to say? Quiet. So nothing. There's probably a guy in here that like tells us his life story and his obituary and everything about himself and everyone and about everything in this room, but it would take me a long time to find him, so let's just move on and go to this door. When Ness arrives, the Runway 5 told me to let him in, so please come in. Arriving in style. And though the Runway 5 have moved up in the world to a gigantic theater, they're in a bigger debt than before. Let's see what they have to say about that. We owe you guys so much. Sorry. To meet Geldegard Monotol, you'll need our help. I don't exactly know why, it's just a hunch. We know how to sing, but we don't know how to handle money or women, bro. Do wop, do do wop. I, I love the voices for these guys, it's so fun. We're so helpless. Really helpless and hopeless. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Again, we've been cheated by the theater owner. We're stuck here with a phony contract. Oh, yeah. I also like how my voices change every single time I do anyone. But at least I'm doing voices at all. They're fun. Have I got a bombshell for you tonight, kids? Ow! Kaboom! The Runaway Five, yeah! Three, two, one, go! I'm pretty sure we can all agree on the fact that if the Runway 5 were a real band, they would be so popular. Like, I don't care what genre of music you're into, you'd probably be into the Runway 5. Oh, hi. <laughs> Ohio to you too, sir. Now, <laughs> this is a little bit vague because 
there's no real structure as to what we're supposed to be doing. Before it was like, oh, you go here and do this, but not really here. Um, you're, you kind of have to guess, and I'm doing the right thing. Um, it just seems really disorganized. Or disorganized. Temporarily closed. Gwark. Like that. That's so random, but it's something you should do. Just like you should go into the Montoli building. Actually, wait. I don't want to go into the Montoli building because I didn't talk to that cop right there. I want to talk to the cop right there. You boys are sneaking around, looking for Mr. Montoli, aren't you? If I catch you boys doing anything, I'll arrest you, no questions asked. Be prepared. Got it? Ness? <laughs> I've already checked out your name. So, the corrupt cops are everywhere. Also, we have not seen, like, any enemies. Which is strange. Like, what's up with that? There's another cop, but we haven't seen enemies. And usually when I go through, uh, Foreside, I see enemies everywhere. Protect Mr. Monotilly first. The safety of the citizens of the city comes second. <laughs> That's our job, you know. <laughs> Are, is there a single cop in Earthbound that isn't corrupt? I don't think we've met one. And that's surprising. Mr. Monotoli's building. Last night- oh. Last night there was a solitaire tournament. I lost my shirt. I'll invite you next time. Hey wait, do you even know what solitaire is? <laughs> no, I was born yesterday. I fell off the turnip truck and I'm breaking out in hives because sadly I'm allergic to, to radish type foods. Are turnips in the radish family? I don't know. I'm an elite businessman who works in Mr. Monotoli's office. Hello, babyface. What brings you to the Monotoli building? Nothing, girl. I'm just gonna beat up your boss because he's apparently <laughs> too big for his britches. He really needs some bigger britches, but he hasn't gotten around to getting bigger britches. This elevator is for Master Pokey's use. It goes to directly to the 47th floor. S quit staring at my hips. Why don't you stand somewhere else instead of behind me? Yo, girl. <laughs> I'll stare at you. <laughs> no, I, I, I won't finish that sentence. Because that would have sounded extremely awkward. 47th floor. She seems awfully perturbed. Maybe there's like... Whoa. There's a lot of people staring at her hips. It's a big problem. And then they're like, yo, she... <laughs> You have to stare at them 8-pit hips. <laughs> the measurements are like... 5, 2, and 5. I'm, not, I'm probably going overboard with this, but... It's like, what, what are you measuring in? Pixels. Okay, whatever. <laughs> that I have no idea where my head went during that. And that's a, no a normal thing for me. I usually don't know where my head is going. Whoops, I was almost going to beat you up. Are you a friend of Master Pokey? It's okay to visit him here, but don't wander around the building. Someone might be suspicious of you and take a uh, pot shot at you with a machine gun. Okay. <laughs> so, it's like Crime Lord Boss, yo. Now, if you go into that other door, Pokey will be in there, but I want to go in this door because if you went and saw Pokey, you wouldn't know that his dad is in this golden room. You haven't changed much, Ness. I'm a, a Loisius Minch. Pokey's dad. Due to my son's success, I've now lived the life of a rich man. Every dog has his day. That's the perfect proverb to describe me. Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha ha! My jaw's tired. I'll bet, you probably need to practice like once a day- oh, is that a map? No, it's not. You probably have to practice once a day to be able to laugh that heartily. You have to, uh, you have to chew like five sticks of gum at once, at three times a day after every meal. It's probably the, the routine for that. Get away from me, kid! You won't get away from me, kid! <laughs> Ooh la la! This, this is my poor old friend. Ah, uh, what's her name? Pig's butt? No, no, uh, Ness. Didn't you come here to beg me for some money? Ooh la la. Don't you recognize me? I'm Mr. Pokey. Pokey. Get it? I'm now Geldegard Monotilly's partner, and I give him political and economic advice. 
I heard there were some ratty-looking kids asking for Mr. Monotoli. Was that you, Ness? This isn't the place for the likes of you. Get out of here. Now, loser. I have no control over this. I'm just forced to leave by Pokey's cronies. Pokey is not not really helping himself out. He's just digging a bigger hole. You must never show your face around Master Pokey. You got that? Interesting. So at least we know where Pokey is. So, we're down in Foreside. I know, that sounds really weird. Also, I came back from a cut. I'm suddenly outside and stuff. Well, I took the liberty of cutting out the traversal of that because I want to get things done in episodes. I want to make progress because otherwise it'd be boring. There's our first enemy. Let's not fight the first enemy. Let's avoid the enemy. Avoiding enemy. Evasive maneuvers are successful. Yeah. Now, before we carry on, I want to do one thing off screen. I'm going to go to Tucson. What? Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm not in the street. There it is. Looks like the next bus will come soon. I want to go back to Tucson to pick up a couple of things. What am I picking up? Ketchup packets, of course. I'll be right back, and I will meet you back in Dusty Dunes Desert, because that is indeed the next place we need to go. We need to go back to the desert itself. But when I come back after the cut, I will have ketchup packets. Tucson via 3, that's going to cost you 6 bucks for a lot of you. <laughs> yeah, I have $700. And done. Man, I went on a road trip. I went all the way back to Tucson, which took many minutes, and I did some stuff. Oh, and by the way, I'm, I'm near that place where we went and fed the man and slept, and it's now a, a actual legitimate mine. But I did some things off screen. You can see Ness has a lot of ketchup. He's really into that ketchup. And that's because there's something that happens that's cool. If you use the magic truffle, and it is on the top of your inventory, you can tell it's at the top because if I give it to myself, it will be at the top. Yeah, so it's at the top. And if you have ketchup packets in your inventory and you use the magic truffle in battle, it has to be in battle, it will be used, but it actually won't go away. One of the ketchup packets will. Now, this is debated whether or not this is a secret, or a glitch, or it was just intended. And it's not really a secret, they just never tell you. But, it's something you can do. So, this gives me... Go to help. This gives me, uh, 80 PP, about. So, I can use this however many times I want, just as long as I have ketchup packets in my inventory. Which is awesome! I didn't know that until I recorded the, before I recorded this episode. It's amazing! And so I'm going to be abusing that because it's fun. Um, also, Paula has some picnic lunches to keep everyone healthy. She also has the PSI caramels, which I might either sell or just use because I don't really need them now that I know this cool condiments thing. She also has the cup of life noodles because she's going to be moving first, so if someone dies, she can revive them. And then Jeff has bottle rockets, because he always does. I'm happy with this inventory, and let's go inside after we talk to these people. Though you may not believe it, I'm a healer. You, ha you are this guy. I don't care about you. I have lots of work to do, but I can't seem to move. I'm so curious about the dig. I can't help it. I think he should dig somewhere else. If they have a live broadcast from the dig, I can check out the dig while relaxing on the floor. I've been watching them dig for a while. I wonder what they'll find. They should get like a gazebo out here, because this seems like a cool, um, a cool gathering. We're a bunch of random strangers gathered together just to watch a dig happen. That seems cool. 
I don't know, I, th that road trip really put me in cheery mood because I'm enjoying this Let's Play. I'm enjoying Earthbound. I'm not stressing over anything. I'm just enjoying the game, and I hope you guys are enjoying the episodes. I have, I don't have a problem. I didn't have a problem digging until this. I found a maze. Lots of monsters appeared, so I couldn't proceed. There's five moles. If I beat the monsters, I can continue on. I think I have a bleeding ulcer from worrying too much. Uh, I've had something sort of like that. I'm helpless to really do anything. Once, um, it, it was a summer in Washington where the weather, it was, it was record setting. I, it was over 100 degrees. I think it didn't reach 110, no, but it, it was, it was really high. Also, those are not coil snakes. Those are a different snake and you don't want to fight them. But it was, it was really hot out and I got, I'm not sure if it was like sunstroke or heat stroke or something, but it was almost like the flu, stomach flu, where my stomach would not stop churning and it was horrible. So going back to the game, uh, this is the gold mine, which is a dungeon. Some consider it to be a hard dungeon, though I don't really, I don't really share that sentiment. It seems pretty easy if you have a map to go along with it, or if you've just done it before and you kind of remember the layout. And I, fortunately, have both of those. I do have a map, and I have this. There are five moles, and they are the masters of this hole. There are five masters in all. We are all moles, of course. I believe I'm the third strongest among us. Take your best shot. All of these moles believe that they're the third strongest, but in actuality, they're all of equal stature. Also, Paula, I forgot to life up. Uh, that's bad. <laughs> It'd be really funny if she died right off. Let's use this on her. And Paula, you use freeze. Now, you do not want to have Ness and Jeff attack because it has a physical shield just going into the battle. It doesn't have to use it. It has an innate shield and it will make it stronger with PSI shield beta. So you don't want to use physical attacks. You pretty much just want to use PSI freeze and then have the others defend or life up Paula. PSI freeze comes out. Hopefully it'll solidify him because I'm worried about Paula's health. It's attacking. 44 damage to Paula. Jeff's on guard and Paula's HP is maxed out. Noise. Uh, let's defend. And Paula, you go ahead and finish this guy off with another PSI freeze. And Jeff, you defend. This should finish him off. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty simple, pretty easy, and it's fun as well because you're you're just destroying monsters. Paula's levels now 30, HP went up by three, maximum PP went up by one. That's the first of the Guardian Diggers IQ capsule. Let's give that to. Jeff. Give Jeff. And now Jeff. Actually, I think I could have used that out for inventory but and given it to Jeff that way. But I... Yeah, I could have. But I, I like being careful. Use that on yourself, Jeff. IQ does affect the strength of PSI attacks, though I think it's still more valuable on Jeff because without IQ... Wow. That's, that's kind of creepy. Without IQ... Uh, Jeff is not going to be repairing items, and if he doesn't repair items, he's not really relevant. He would just be kind of a, a worse version of... What's his face? Ness. Let's see, uh, we're here. I just need to make sure that I'm at the right area. Okay, now let's just continue on south. I have a map, so I am the best. I am the champion. I haven't heard that song in a while. You ever, there are a lot of songs that just kind of drop out of existence. Nope! Aw, oh, man. Like, Gangnam Style? Do you remember when that was a thing? And then it lasted for maybe three months and then dropped out of existence completely? Okay, now the Thirsty Coil Snakes, you just want to use PSI Freeze Alpha on them. PSI Frieza, as I so lovingly called it. Uh, but they have the ability to poison you, which is annoying. And thankfully, though, Ness has almost infinite PP here because of the truffle thing. And so he can keep healing and lifing up his allies. 900 experience. Jeff's levels... In, uh, sorry. Ness's levels are now 32. Oh, baby! Offense went up by 5. Defense went up by 2. Speed went up by 2. Oh, baby! Guts went up by 3. Vitality went up by 2. Oh, baby! IQ went up by 3. Luck went up by 2. Sweet! Maximum HP went up by 26. That rocks! Maximum PP went up by 12. Jeff's levels now 28. Oh, baby! Offense went up by 4. Defense went up by 2. Guts went up by 1. Vitality went up by 1. IQ went up by 2. Luck went up by 1. HP went up by 7. Awesome. Now, I know we're, we're, we don't have much further to go. Um, 
In fact, as soon as I reach a point where I can say, uh, I can, like, quit, I will. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow, that's doing damage. My. <laughs> my popsicles in firestorms. That's my new curse word, apparently. Uh, this there. Okay, I would like to find one more mole, and then defeat it, and then I think that's a good place to end, because that's like a... That's like a... A point. It's it's the point. It's a checkpoint, that's what I'm trying to say. Where I can, I can kind of realize what we've done, where we've gone, and... Just as a point of reference, right there is the beginning, to the right. In fact, you could see the Mr. Cave Man. <laughs> so, actually, this song, I forgot about that. This song is from Mother One. In fact, there are a lot of songs in Earthbound that are straight-up copies of Mother One songs, which is I, not a bad thing. Mother One has a great soundtrack. Like, go go listen to the, the official soundtracks of these games, You'll be blown away. Um, there was one song that I I didn't I didn't remember to point out. Um, it was the song that played when we met Tessie. Yeah, the song that played when we met Tessie, where there's water in the background. Now that may not seem like a big deal from you know in modern game standards, but. That realistic water sound was amazing for the SNES. Most of the songs here, I consistently find astounding. I'm really the third strongest master. I'll destroy you now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guardian Digger attacked. Let's just do the same thing that we did before. Keep on keeping on. Defend. Actually, these guys are weak to flash, so I'll use flash just for grins and giggles. And then this. Uh, the, the song that played with the Runway 5 this episode, that, that's another example, because that sounds just like a trumpet, but for SNES standards, 16-bit gaming, that's, that's impressive. Um, this OSD is just good. Uh, defend, uh, actually no, you go ahead and be productive with yourself, Ness, life up, Jeff, and just kill him again, or kill him this time with freeze beta, and defend. And this should do him in? Yes, it did. Awesome. Number three. What was that? That was the second one we defeated. And Paula does not get a level up, though she is extremely close. And that is a point of defense. That is a good place to end it off, because at the next level, let me just tell you, next level, Paula's going to get something good. Oh, wow. She's going to learn a thing, and it will one-shot bosses. It's awesome. But I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. I really do mean that. I say it every episode, or at least I try to. And it's not just its not just a routine. I do mean thank you so much for watching. It's its awesome that, I, that you guys are there, and you're watching and talking with me. It's something that I never thought I'd accomplish. But um, next time in Pal Plays Earthbound, we will finish out this cave, killing the rest of the guardian diggers and finding out who's really the third strongest uh hint it's jeff he's the third strongest among us i release new episodes of earthbound tuesdays thursdays and saturdays and if you like this episode then comment if you didn't like this episode then comment and tell me how i could make the next episode so that you would like it i'll see you guys next time for another pal plays earthbound this is ness paula jeff and paladin signing off